Welcome back to the Underwater Filming Tip Series. My name is Vanessa Karake and this is the second video where we answer your questions. As mentioned in the previous Q&A video, we had to shorten down the questions a bit to the core information. So let's dive right into it. So the first question comes from Splash Underwater Photo and Video. How to position video lights, especially when filming people? It bothers to have the bright lights at their faces. Should it be something similar to the strobe's position? We're going to talk about lighting in an upcoming episode, but lights, that's just something your subjects are going to have to deal with. Usually what we do before the dive, we brief the divers that we have really bright lights and that they shouldn't look right into the light. They should look past the light. And positioning of the lights, it really depends what you want to do. Just be aware that if you reposition your lights, the balance of your housing is going to be off, so that might result into shaky footage. We leave the lights as they are just to keep the housing in balance, and maybe we'll tweak the front of the light so it's at a slight angle depending on what we want to do. The next question is from Apps My. What if someone asks for an internship to meet all of you and learn from the best directly? It's not just a question, but I think it's a big blue dream. In the name of the whole Behind the Mask team, we want to say thank you very much for this comment. If you want, pass by at the boat show in January in Dusseldorf in Germany, and then you can meet all of us there. As mentioned before, workshops is something that we are thinking about. So if you're into that, leave a comment below. Next question is from Reibnitz. How to manage moisture in an action camera like GoPros? There's uh, these things called um, anti-fog thingies, um, anti-fog inserts, and then you can place them inside of your housing and that will take the moisture and capture it in that insert. And the other thing is try to keep the temperature change to a minimum. So if it's very hot outside, keep the GoPro in the shade, cover it up and don't leave it in the full sunlight. Next question is from PD Producing Diving. Number one, go for the Lumix S1H. Number two, go for the Blackmagic Pocket 6K camera. Number three, go for the Lumix S1. Number four, go for the classic GH5S. And number five, go for something else, but in the same budget. All of those cameras would be in my budget, looking for the best underwater results. The new S1H from the Panasonic is a great camera. It can do 6K, it's a full frame camera. It has in-body stabilization. So that is definitely a very good choice. It has more or less the same features as the S1, just adding the 6K, but we get to the S1 in a second. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K has a Super 35 sensor. It's a great camera and has very cinematic footage what I can see in all the review videos. I'm not really sure if there's a housing for that camera on the market yet, but it's gonna be on the market sooner or later. And the 6K version has an EF mount, so it's gonna have bigger lenses in in comparison to the 4K version, which has a Micro Four Thirds sensor and would take the smaller Micro Four Thirds lenses. So if you're traveling a lot and size is an issue, then that's something you have to think about. And the 6K camera uses CFast cards or SSD drives. So the CFast cards are very expensive. That's just something that you have to be aware of. And a huge plus point for this camera is like the 4K, the 6K version also films in RAW. So you are looking to get the best quality shots. RAW is going to give you the best possible options in color grading. Just keep in mind that the 6K version has a touch screen, so be sure when you get a housing that you can access all the functions that you need. The Blackmagic camera doesn't have an in-body stabilization, so if you want to get really smooth shots, you're going to have to film in higher frame rates, but that doesn't really matter. And just make sure that your rig is properly balanced. Back to Panasonic, the S1, not the S1H, is more or less the same camera as the S1H, just minus the 6K, so it can only film up to 4K far as I know. It's still the full frame camera, it's a fantastic camera, so that's a really good choice as well. It's really good in low light, uh, just be aware that the 4K 60 frames per second has a 1.5 crop, so you're going to crop into that frame and get less of your sensor coverage. But the 4K 25 and 30p use the whole full frame sensor. And of course, it also has the in-body stabilization, so it's overall a fantastic camera as well. The Panasonic GH5 is a lot better than a Panasonic GH5 in low light because it has a dual ISO so you can set the ISO way higher and get better low light shots but the GH5S doesn't have an in-body stabilization so if that's something that you're looking for then the GH5 would be your better choice if you're filming a lot in low light and you need that good low light performance well then the GH5S is your better bet. The GH5 and the GH5S are going to be more compact than the cameras mentioned before because they have a Micro Four Thirds sensor. So the lenses are going to be a lot smaller, at least the native lenses. And also the GH5 and the GH5S use SD cards and they are a lot cheaper than the CFast cards or external SSD drives. Overall, that's going to be the cheapest and smallest setup. But if you're really looking out for the best image quality possible, then maybe the Blackmagic Pocket 6K will be your best bet because it can film raw. 
And for other suggestions, look into the Zcam E2. That's more or less a budget version of the RED cinema camera. It can film RAW and it has all of these other goodies. And that camera is actually a new budget range, so go and check it out and all its amazing features. Florian is actually testing it out right now, so we have to wait and see how that camera actually performs underwater. The next question is from Igor Egido. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Which picture profile do you recommend for Sony cameras? Well, with Sony cameras underwater, it's more a white balance issue. The white balance of Sony cameras tends to be not as good as on other cameras. So a red filter is gonna definitely improve your image quality and it's gonna help you get better white balance. Some say that S-Log is the best and some actually say that HLG is the best. So perhaps you just go and check out the different picture profiles for yourself and just compare the shots and see what you like best and with what you can work best. Next question is from Gabriel A. I would like to hear about stabilizing a video in the post-processing. I am sure it is always best if we manage to capture a smooth footage in the first place. Are these software actually reliable and used for professional underwater filmmaking? Are there any pros and cons of post-processing stabilization? Well, first of all, of course, it's best to get the smoothest shots you can get in camera. With Adobe Premiere Pro or After Effects, you can use a WAP stabilizer that works really well. And most of the editing software these days have some kind of stabilizer. The stabilizer work really well but if the footage is too shaky then you might get sort of a wobbly effect and distortions so try to use it on not too shaky footage so the pros for a stabilizer is of course you're removing all the shakiness the cons well, it's gonna render longer, it's gonna use more processing power and it's gonna crop into your image slightly. So it uses the rest of the image to sort of stabilize, to move around the image to get it stabilized. And if your software doesn't have a stabilizer, there are other programs out there like Real Steady, but they tend to be pretty expensive. So the next question is from Damian Baran. Do you use a red filter in your underwater filming and photography or do you rely on white balance? Is it even possible to use a red filter together with a wide angle wet lens. First of all, red filter, yes, definitely. We use them all the time. And of course you can use red filters with wide angle wet lenses. The filter is gonna go in between the wet lens and the lens. But talk to your underwater camera store to see what filters are available for you. Sometimes you can even just screw off the metal ring of the filter and just use the glass and place it in between the two lenses. And the other option that you would have is you would use a filter sheet and then you place it between the lens and the camera sensor. But we talked about that in the previous episode episode where we talk about underwater filters. So the next question is from Jimmy Legrand. It would be nice if you'd make an episode showing how you can extract the best of our footage made from a single GoPro with a red filter. I have this camera and I don't want to become a professional filmmaker, but I want to have the best results with my editing software. That's a great point. Use the hashtag BTM color grade my footage comment below and let's do that. And other than that, go and check out the color correction episode where we talk about the channel mixer to get the best out of your footage. The next question comes from Randy Delay. One, should I set my white balance to match the temperature of my lights when I'm filming video? I am unable to change it once I'm in the water. Number two, red filters or not when using lights. Number three, should I run the lights at the brightest setting or would I use different settings at different depths? If you're just filming in the shallows and using ambient light, set your manual white balance to to daylight, use a red filter and that's going to give you good results. If you're filming deeper down, like 30 or 40 meters, where your lights are your main light source, then I would definitely recommend to set your Kelvin value to match the Kelvin value of your video lights. And the red filter is not going to have a huge impact there. And yes, I would definitely recommend to use the lights at the brighter setting. If you go really close to a subject, then you may have to dial down your light a bit to not overexpose. Next question is from Jonas Grulke. How do you focus underwater in video mode? Do you do it manually or do you prefer some special automatic setting to follow animals. For example, you have some sharks circling around with random individuals or you have particles in the water. Usually we shoot in manual focus. We might use with the GH5 the autofocus when we're using a higher shutter speed because the autofocus of the GH5 is really bad. If you're on a Sony or on a Canon camera, you may get away with autofocus because it's pretty good on these cameras these days. And if there's a lot of action or particles in the water, you should definitely use manual focus because if you use the autofocus, it may not know what to focus on. So you're gonna always have this focus shifting during your shot. Next question is from David Garcia Herrera. I hope that's right. I have a Canon G9 Mark II with a fantasy case and two lights, Ocotorch 550D+, 1000 lumen each. 
I normally dive in Ireland around 20 meters deep. My photos are not really sharp and don't have the definition that other photographers have. What can I do to improve this? First of all, 1000 lumen per light is really not enough. Your best bet will be to use strobes. They are gonna be a lot more powerful and you're gonna be able to freeze the frame and get a crisper image when you're using strobes. And what we would definitely recommend is to shoot in raw because then you have the best options in color correction to tweak the white balance, to tweak the exposure, and all of the other settings. And if you don't have the option to get more powerful lights or to get strobes, you can always bump up the ISO to a higher ISO, get a faster shutter speed, open up that aperture to let more light hit the sensor so you can actually really freeze the frame and get a sharp shot. And another tip would be to get as close as you can to your subject, to eliminate the water column between your camera and your subject. Have a very wide angle lens on there. So the closer you are, the sharper it's gonna get and your lights are gonna be brighter. Because light doesn't travel very far on the water, it's only gonna travel one to two meters. And if you're in Ireland, you're not gonna have the best water conditions, I assume. Next question is from Ravenstone. I was wondering what is the best way to stabilize myself and my footage when dealing with lots of currents and swell. Also, will freediving fins really make much difference? If you really have a lot of current and a lot of swell, freediving fins are not gonna make you more stable. Freediving fins work very good when you have calm water and you're doing long shots. That's what they're good for. You can get really stable and long, smooth shots over a reef or a scenery. Freediving fins might help you swim against the current. It's gonna be less exhausting, that for sure, but as I said, it's not gonna improve the stableness of your footage. So what we would recommend you to do is to film in slow motion. Film in the highest slow motion setting possible and then slow it down in post-production. And other than that, if you have a dive buddy with you and you have a surface area where you can really kneel down without damaging anything, you can have your buddy push you down to the ground and keep you steady while you're shooting with your camera. And the other option would be to use a tripod and weigh it down with a lot of weights to keep it rock steady. And also in general, if you have a lot of current, keep the setup as compact as possible so the current doesn't have a lot of objects to push around. The next question is from Will Strathman. That's right. Number one, what recommendations do you have for budget-friendly video lights? Is there such a thing? Almost all the lights I've seen that look good start costing upwards a thousand dollars each. Number two is, from a business standpoint, do you pitch your projects to clients or brands or is most of your work commissioned? Any tips of someone looking to get into more work in the underwater cinematography field? So number one, Light is just something that you're gonna have to invest in, but they will join you on your journey for a long time. They're gonna outlive most of your camera setups. So it's definitely worth investing in good lights. And sadly, there is no workaround to this. And to question number two, this topic is actually a topic that we want to cover in one of the upcoming episodes, so stay tuned for that. But for now, it's more or less a mix of everything that you mentioned. And if you want to become a freelancer, you're going to have to become a salesman as well in some situations. If you're not able to sell your product, you're not going to earn any money. And other than that, doing a good job, having a positive vibe, even in stressful situations, always being prepared and always adding that little extra. And a very important part is also to be reliable and to deliver on what you've promised. And if you've added that little extra, your client is gonna be really happy and then for sure recommend you to others. Next question is from Mextex1. What do you think about using flat profiles like Cine or S-Log? I am using Sony RX100. About flat profiles, it really depends on what you want to do. Flat profiles are gonna give you a better dynamic range, so it's gonna give you more range to color grade later on. But the downside to flat profiles, it's really hard to expose and it's really hard to nail your focus. So it needs a lot of training. But if you're fine with that, the flat profiles are definitely going to give you a better result than the other profiles. And next hex one has another question. I am using the RX100 plus a 12 times diopter and I am struggling very hard with the depths of field when I'm filming small critters. The footage always comes out too shaky and the focus is far from constantly nailed. Is there any option to improve without changing the whole setup? So first of all, use a tripod that's going to eliminate a lot of shakiness. Use a manual focus and close down that aperture because then you have a deeper depth of field and a bigger range will be in focus. So it's not gonna be that hard to nail that focus in that range. And then you can shoot in higher frame rates or slow motion to get rid of that shakiness. Make sure that your housing is properly buoyant. If you're using a tripod, you want to have it slightly negative so that it pushes down the whole tripod and makes the setup a bit more stable. If you have any kind of in-body stabilization or lens stabilization, turn that on. Even if you have an electronic image stabilizer, you can turn that one on. Just be aware that that's gonna crop into your 
image a bit. It works more or less the same way as a stabilizer in post-production. It just gets rid of that extra computing power. And the last question is from Dylan Slater. Can you use video lights for still photos and get the same results as using strobes? I don't want to buy both. Well, strobes are a lot more powerful than video lights because they only have to power up a fraction of a second. So you're gonna get a lot better shots with strobes. But if you have really powerful video lights like 12,000 loom or even higher, you can get pretty good results as well. Just bump up that ISO, use a higher shutter speed and open up the aperture to really freeze the frame and get a crisp shot. Whew, and that's a wrap. I hope this episode was helpful to you. Thank you so much for asking all of these questions. We really enjoy these episodes. So if you want more like these, then comment below with the hashtag BTM underwater filming tips, because maybe now you have a whole set of new questions that you want us to answer. If you like this episode, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, safe diving, and I will hopefully see you in the next episode.